Okay, so today I'm going to briefly discuss what I consider to be an ancient Maya urban network in northwest Belize. So analysis of ancient Maya cities and settlements has turned in the past decades to conceptualizations which previously focused on house or lineage to studies of urbanization. And most effectively, the discussion of urbanism in ancient Maya cities was taken up by Scott Hudson in his book, The Ancient Urban Maya, which focuses on the cities and the various aspects and traits that then make them urban. Looking at the major centers, their associated neighborhoods and outlying hinterland settlements, I think it might be now more accurate to think of some of these other areas as urban networks, linked locations that share ideas, goods, culture, and traditions, and across which labor forces or people are moving readily. It is in this sense that the Maya city of La Milpa in northwest Belize easily becomes an urban hub, and its hinterland settlements form the greater urban network. Uh, the recent analysis of the available data sets comparing some of La Milpa's surrounding hinterland settlements show similar features, including the conceptions of space, layout and organization, structuring of activity areas, and social-related demarcations within the individual settlement populations, as well as aspects of the uh, economy at each location. Some of the settlement areas around La Milpa could be considered more neighborhood and will only be briefly mentioned today, while others discussed I consider more outlying city. These settlements are all built practically in the landscape, each modifying as needed to suit the desires of the specific settlement populations. And there are a number of settlements and cities uh, and locations explored in the region I'll be focusing on, but I'm just gonna limit the focus because we have over 60 sites in this area. This is my, it, Helps me get less nervous if I throw a Star Wars reference out there. So um, to provide some orientation with respect to the area of the Three Rivers region, it's a large environmental and cultural area covering some 5,140 square kilometers. This region is delimited to the north and west by the Rio Azul and its associated floodplains, to the east by the Booths River and its floodplains, and then to the south by the site of Chanchich. Uh, this region includes parts of northwest Belize, a portion of the northeast Paten of Guatemala, and the southern part of the Mexican state of Quintana Roo. The sites to be discussed today are specifically located within the Rio Bravo Conservation and Management Area. This is a protected nature reserve encompassing some 251,000 acres, or about 102,000 uh, hectares, of protected forest in northwest Belize. This area is managed by the Program for Belize, which provides land access to our appropriately named Program for Belize Archaeology Project. This archaeology project and the Program for Belize provides land access within the nature reserve, and we are responsible for all research, documentation, and preservation of all cultural heritage within the Rio Bravo Conservation and Management Area. Program has conducted research annually within the area since 1992, and to date we have approximately 60 identified sites, of which five are categorized by their material remains as either major or minor centers. So now that we've situated ourselves in the region, time to move on. Uh, we know that the ancient urban Maya did dwell in cities. Based on the discussion by Hudson, many have some, if not all, of the various components that are defined and show up regularly for consideration as a city or an urban area. Size, density, social differentiation, way of life, specialized functions, and form. And expanding on these factors for consideration, he also includes the built form, neighborhoods, and the economy, which serve as attractors for the population to come and live in a city or urban center despite any detractors like health issues, water, trash or crowding, but mainly the built form neighborhoods or lack thereof in the economy are going to be my focus today. So I could talk about to call there in the jungle or some of the most obvious examples, but I won't. There's already a whole host of scholarship devoted to these larger, better known locations, and we consider them decidedly urban. So I will introduce a new area for consideration where there has been less focus and less media attention that I think does exemplify the urban network. We know especially that the most recent LIDAR data shown for Tikal, it indicates a hotbed of urbanism, and per Hudson's considering, it falls under socially distant but physically close. So since the discussion of the ancient Maya's urban dwellers and their cities and settlements is not new and has been discussed by other longstanding ancient Maya scholars, um, what's different in my presentation is the area discussed and not the discussion of a, um, and the discussion of a possibility of a greater urban network rather than just urban.
So here's what we know. We have a number of factors that influence the broader expansion of the discussion of urbanism across the ancient Maya realm, but our single limiting factor is the jungle, because it is impairing our ability to identify the true extent of the ancient Maya cities and settlements. A contributing factor in support of the ancient urban Maya is the persistence of their cities and polities over time. Their longevity illustrates that not only were the larger urban areas attractive, attractive for all manner of citizens, but also the hinterland and smaller settlements, which also exhibit the same persistence of occupation over time. Fortunately, the limitations imposed by the jungle are slowly changing thanks to large-scale aerial LIDAR surveys, but still there are entire swaths of the rainforest and jungle that have yet to reveal the true extent of the urban and even hinterland cities and settlements, especially in Northwest Belize, my region, and specifically in the um, RBCMA, the Rio Bravo Conservation and Management Area, but that is changing. So based on just the current data, I will discuss at this point that I believe it can be deduced that the ancient Maya city of La Milpa and its surrounding area are not only urban, but an extended urban network. So to define an urban network, uh, 1977 definition states an urban network is a national or regional group of interdependent cities where changes in one city will affect the other cities. While the concept of the urban network implies a certain degree of interdependency among the cities that are connected by various linkages at different spatial scales. If we move into a more present day definition and discussion by Rosenblatt and Neil in chapter one of the handbook on cities and networks, they make the argument that defining the network, even an urban one, begins by defining the relationships that serve as its building blocks, which might include the physical and or intangible flows, including the movement of people, information, goods and services through communication networks or physical infrastructure. But it also includes the effective relationships like friendship, the biological relationships, i.e. kinship, and the relationships of similarity or co-location. Um, so like linkages within cities, the networks exist to speed the flow of goods, people, and ideas. So here's my quick disclaimer so I don't make any other Maya scholars angry. Applying these definitions, we do not need to rethink the approach to every ancient Maya city or settlement, but we should consider that while not all ancient Maya cities contain vast neighborhoods, there are locations that definitely fit within the given network, um, network definitions. So getting to my area, thinking of the area of the greater Lamilpa polity, as this region has been named and discussed before, including by myself, one should definitely consider this region as an urban network. La Milpa is both urban, belonging to or relating to the city or town, urban center, uh, an area that's large and heavily populated, and now the hub of an urban network, uh, the hub for a linked set of cities that share the ideas and across which labor forces move readily. There is no doubt <clears throat> that with its temples, identified market center area, sprawling plazas and courtyards connected by the Sokbeab or roadways, and its Acropolis area with its cluster of small but complex courtyards, identified as the elite residential area, that La Milpa would be the node within the greater Three Rivers region. It has been posited that La Milpa is also the religious center for all of the surrounding area with all the major festivals and ceremonies taking place here. It is also the major market center. The core does have its share of neighborhoods as posited with the sites of La Milpa East, North, or South. Sorry, they didn't get more imaginative when naming those areas. Um, thus expanding the overall urban area of the La Milpa core. So depending on any new revelations from the future proposed LIDAR surveys, these locations fit the traits of both socially distant and physically close, posited by Hudson, as they are proximally close to the main La Milpa core and appear to radiate outward in a relatively developed landscape. Other locations, such as Medicinal Trail or Zak Nab, would then be spokes of the network, outlying settlements beholden only to themselves for their own goods and services, but connected to the greater node through social dynamics, goods, ideas, and shared culture. Further, both have clear evidence of their own temple structures and production and processing locations for food goods, as well as elite and commoner residences. These two areas are now physically distant, but socially close. While Medicinal Trail lies closer in line with the base of the La Milpa core, it definitely supports its own localized elite population and extended kin group based on the analysis of its various structural groups. Additionally, this settlement is considered a resource specialized community with its numerous terraces, food processing locations, 
And like most all ancient Maya communities, its own water retention and management systems and should be considered a city within a network. Zaknab is another settlement of the urban network. Wholly self-sufficient, like most all ancient Maya settlements, no matter the size, it supports its own local population of both elite and commoner citizenry based on the analysis of its architectural elements and specific structu structural groups, as well as separate areas for food processing and storage. Medicinal Trail and Zaknab appear to have been the major suppliers for the agricultural products for this urban network. This conclusion is based on their respective location or identified modifications. So specifically for Zak Nob, being located adjacent to a Bajo or seasonal swamp, the land that was regularly exploited for agriculture due to its nutrient-rich mud or soil, and then for medicinal trail, the identified landform modifications, specifically the terracing implemented to create greater agricultural spaces. Each location exhibits shared cultural aspects, not only through their shared architectural elements, but also through shared traditions such as ancestor veneration, which has been identified at almost all the sites to date within the RBCMA. Zaknab is also currently thought of as an expansion location, with so far a single defined construction phase, though the geophysical survey data for its southern pasture indicates that this interpretation needs to be reconsidered, but that's a completely different paper. The idea of expansion gives indication that these city areas were bustling hives of humanity. We have evidence of long distance trade and exchange and growth as the various population components expanded out into the surrounding area, either for better access to resources or just more space to alleviate overcrowding. As the ancient Maya, like many of us, were not immune to the problems facing big cities today, which leads into a whole different discussion. Um, so to sum up, we have the urban and urbanism as discussed at length by Scott Hudson, which definitely applies to the ancient Maya cities and settlements and from which can be discussed how the inhabitants interacted with and constructed their built environments in which households and settlements are identified as socially distant, but physically close. I turn this around to initiate the discussion of the urban network with physically distant settlements and cities that were socially close through shared culture, traditions, and norms that are present in the shared building constructions representing the different societal demarcations, but also through the shared traditions based on kinship, which could be yet another paper. So thank you to Manuel and Soren for inviting me today and the University of Edinburgh for hosting and my ubiquitous thank yous to Belize and the Institute of Archaeology and the program for Belize.